everyone, my name is Becca Lundy and I am here to do another live weekly voice lesson with you all. I am the voice teacher at Rock U School of Music. Um, we are accepting new clients for private one-on-one -on -one instruction. So if you like what you learn here and you're interested in learning more, you can always reach out to us via Facebook or via email through our website and we can get you set up with um, a one-on-one -on -one voice lesson. So there's a couple of things I wanna talk about today before we get started. Um, the first thing that I wanna talk about is the concept of singing from the diaphragm. So if you've done any amount of like looking into voice lessons or vocal technique, you've probably heard a lot about your diaphragm. Now I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of different students about their confusion regarding the diaphragm. And I always like to just kind of set these things straight. Something you may not know about me is that I'm also a yoga teacher. So I have a little bit of an anatomy and fitness background as well as my vocal background. So I love to get people totally up to speed with how the body works and exactly how we're doing what we're doing when we are singing. So I'm gonna show you kind of on my body where the diaphragm is, what it looks like, what it does, how it works, and how we can both, uh, best support it. So I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit just so that you can see um, my belly a little bit more, and then I will start explaining. So here you have kind of my low ribs, my belly button's like here. I can feel kind of the arch of where my rib cage is sitting. The diaphragm is a sheet of muscle that attaches to the inside of the rib cage. It's kind of shaped like a jellyfish. So I always, when I'm demonstrating it, I kind of like to show uh, my hands as if they were my diaphragm. So when we are sitting with the diaphragm at neutral, so this would be like if I have just exhaled, my diaphragm is lifted and it makes this little arch shape. So when we inhale, we move the belly out, the internal organs get compressed slightly and the diaphragm presses down. So the diaphragm kind of flattens and begins to take up a little bit more space. As the diaphragm pulls down, kind of extending the belly a little bit by pressing some of the internal organs slightly out of the way, we're drawing air into our lungs because we're creating negative pressure. So when we, when we inhale, diaphragm pulls down and that's what pulls the air into our lungs. So that's how we take our big inhale. And that's part of why it's so important for us to allow our belly to expand completely when we're taking our inhale, because we really wanna let that diaphragm descend as much as it wants to, so that the lungs can expand as much as they want to. When we exhale, the diaphragm returns to neutral finding this little arch shape. As the lungs empty, the diaphragm kind of returns to its original position. So the reason why this is important is because we actually can't control what our diaphragm is doing at any given moment. The diaphragm is an involuntary muscle, like the heart, meaning we can't decide what it's doing. But also, similar to the heart, we can kind of take steps in order to uh, support the diaphragm really well. So for example, if you're having a day where you're very anxious and maybe your heart is racing, you can do things like deep breathing exercises. It won't directly slow down your heart rate, but it will kind of create an environment where your heart can uh, rest a little more. Same deal with the diaphragm. We can't directly control exactly what it's doing, but we can create a situation where the diaphragm can do what we would like it to do a little bit more effectively. So. This is what I'm getting at when I've been talking about making sure that we're keeping the shoulders out of the equation when we're breathing, and especially making sure that we're expanding the belly and the side body when we take our big inhales. Making sure the belly comes out, making sure the side body expands a little bit. You might even feel a little bit of expansion in your low back. And then as we exhale, also using those low belly muscles to push the air out which helps to support as the diaphragm begins to return to its neutral position. So when you hear a singing teacher talking about support, this is what they mean, this is what they're referring to, is using our muscles in our core and our belly to help support what our diaphragm needs to do naturally when we're breathing. 
So I hope that that was helpful. And I want to start our lesson just like I normally do by having us take three deep inhales and hiss out those inhales as long as you can on a nice, long, relaxed So as you're working with these big inhale breaths, I want you to pay attention to what's going on with the belly, feeling big expansion on our inhales, ah, and then really feeling those belly muscles working to press that air out. So let's go ahead and take three big inhales with long hiss exhales. Go ahead, take your first inhale. Ah, and then let's As I've been seeing my in-person students this week, I've also been asking them to, well, not my in-person, my one-on-one -on -one students that I've been seeing via webcam. I've also been asking them to begin their lessons with these hissing breaths. I've been really impressed over the last couple of weeks how these hisses have become longer and better supported with more and more practice. So let's go ahead and do that twice more. Big inhale in, and then press from your bellies. Last one, big inhale in, and then press from your bellies. Very nice. So the other thing that's been coming up a lot during the voice lessons that I've been teaching has been talking a little bit about speaking technique. And this goes along with our discussion about the diaphragm, talking about support and how we can best support our voice to avoid fatiguing. Now, this is a topic that I try not to touch on overly too much, but I do think that it's worth addressing. And it's the topic of vocal fry when we're speaking. Now, I have a tendency to try not to advise my students too, too much in terms of exactly how they're going to speak because the sound of the voice and the way that we speak is a big part of the way that we convey ourselves to others. It's a big part of our identity. So I'm talking about this purely from a technique perspective, and I'm not necessarily saying that anyone has to change the way that they're speaking. So you may have heard of the concept of vocal fry before. Vocal fry is when we allow ourselves to kind of dip into the very bottom of our vocal range and we stop moving enough air to support our sound. So what it sounds like, and we hear it often from most speakers at the end of a sentence, sounds a little bit like this. So the volume goes down, the pitch goes down, all of a sudden we get that slightly gritty sound. This is a problem just because it can be fatiguing. When we hear vocal fry, what we're doing is we're pushing our sound entirely from our larynx and we're not using enough air to support the sound. So that's why it can be a problem. The vocal fry has a very easy fix. However, all we have to do is move a little more air when we're speaking and occasionally speak just a tiny bit higher within our vocal register. So vocal fry can be a problem if you do it consistently. If you're like me and you're a teacher, you speak all day, that's when it can start to be an issue. Um, however, sometimes when we're working on voice exercises, I'll ask or recommend that you speak an exercise before you sing it. And in that situation, it is really important to make sure that we're not frying when we're speaking because we wanna use our speech as a tool to help us find relaxed positions for our throat. So that's why I like to touch on that as well. So, and as you can see in the comments, if you have any questions for me, I know I'm going over more concepts than I usually do. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to post them in the comments. I'll read them all. I'll try to address them all next week. I love the questions. I love um, getting a little direction from the people who are watching. So let's go ahead and get started with just a few uh, singing exercises. We'll start similarly to how we've started before, but I want you to focus extra on this concept of support. So really make sure that your inhales are expanding your belly. Really make sure that your exhales are pressing the air out in a way that's making it so that the throat doesn't have to work so hard. So we'll start nice and low in a really comfortable uh, position. Let's go. We'll go, yeah. 
Make sure you get a good inhale, your turn. <laughs> We're coming up, big inhale. So my strong exhale is making it so my throat does not have to work at all on that top note. Give it a try, your turn. Let's continue coming up using the support of the breath to make it so our throat doesn't have to feel like it's working. Your turn. Now, I sometimes like to sing with a hand on my belly, and I recommend that you try it too. It's not necessarily actually going to do very much in terms of your support, but it will remind you where those muscles are and how to engage them. So that can be a really useful tool for the body. Let's keep coming up. Yawn. Remember your yawn space and your relaxed tongue. Your turn. Continuing to come up. Yawn. Go ahead, your turn, big inhale. And you coming up. Yeah. Your turn. We'll keep going. Oops. I'm not a pianist. Big inhale. Yeah. Your turn. We're going to continue coming up. Keep your breath supporting. Keep your throat and mouth nice and open and relaxed. Yawn. Totally yawny open space in the back. Very relaxed throat, just like we're speaking nice and gently. Your turn. Big inhale. Let's continue. Keep that tongue just super relaxed, sitting in the bottom of your mouth, doing nothing. Inhale. We're going to continue coming up. So as we get higher, Try to make sure that you're not spreading your vowel, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, making a smile shape. Instead, we're letting the lips round just a little, keeping that vowel nice and warm and relaxed. <laughs> Go ahead, your turn. Let's come up for two more. Big inhale. Yeah. Go ahead, your turn. We're going to do one more. So I know it's tempting up on these high notes to push, to get tense, to struggle. Let your breath do all the work for you. And if you allow it to, I promise it will. One more, nice and high. Yeah. Your turn. Excellent. So we're going to take a little break. Feel free to take a sip of water, anything that you would like. If you want, during these little breaks, I think a really excellent use of your time is to take a couple more of those little hisses to get your breath just totally lined up. And what I mean by lined up is just that I want everybody to be able to feel the sensation of the belly muscles supporting the diaphragm as it does its work. So I like to think about support less as our diaphragm is kind of like pushing and supporting our sound, which it is, but we can't directly control that. Instead, I like to think of support as 
our abs and our belly muscles helping to create the best situation to support the diaphragm in doing everything that it needs to do. So maybe that's a little bit more of a helpful way to think about it for you. Maybe that's decoded the idea of the diaphragm a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can find a good like anatomy video where you can really see the diaphragm at work. And I'll post it on our Facebook page as soon as I'm done this lesson. So that might be useful for those of you visual learners um, who need a little more than just an explanation, which is totally fine, I get it. So let's keep going. I wanna do something newish. Let's do nice and low, nice and easy. We're gonna do another onset exercise. We've spoken about this a little before. I wanna do me, me, so the biggest and most important thing about our onset is that we don't want it to be too tense with a glottal stop e, e. you can hear how that's a little bit tense and a little bit fatiguing so i'm actually not going to do it anymore or on the other end of things sometimes we get a breathy onset which sounds like sounds like an h E, e, e. Instead, we want our sound to start right at the same time that our breath starts. Sometimes I ask people to imagine that there's a Y in front of that E vowel. E, 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 e. So go ahead, give it a shot. Imagine the Y in front of that E vowel. Keep everything relaxed. Really let the breath dictate when the sound starts and stops. Let's go ahead. I'll demo one more time and then I will tell you what to sing. <laughs> go ahead, your turn. Big breath in. We'll keep going. Keep it as relaxed as you can. Imagine that little Y in front of the vowel. Let that onset be smooth and eventless. Coming up. Your turn, nice and smooth. Let's keep coming up. Me, 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 me. Your turn, nice big slow breath. Continuing up higher, keep it as relaxed as you can. Now notice I'm starting and stopping my sound completely in between each of these. And this is important because I really want everybody to kind of get the feeling of controlling the sound with the breath. So when we want the sound to start, we start the breath moving. When we want the sound to stop, we stop the breath moving. Oftentimes it seems like it's not that simple, but really it is. Everything in the throat knows how to do this job. We speak all the time, all day. So everything here knows what to do. All we have to do is relax, start the breath when we'd like our sound to start, stop the breath when we'd like our sound to stop, trying not to control it with the throat at all. Let's keep going. Your turn. Let's keep going, coming up a little higher. Notice I'm dropping my jaw a little, go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Beautiful. A few more. Your turn. Keep going just a little higher. As we get higher, sometimes it gets harder to really feel like our throat is relaxed. A trick that I use all the time is I try to trick myself into imagining that I'm gonna sing a low note. So I know that that sounds kind of weird, but when we sing a low note or when we speak in a relaxed place in our voice, he, 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 the larynx sits nice and low in the throat. So a lot of people imagine that the vocal folds kind of live in this like cartilagey part in the throat where we can feel it and it's a little hard. Um, but that's actually a common misconception. The vocal folds sit lower in the throat. They actually sit almost right in between the collarbones, kind of in this spot right at the base of the neck that can be a little bit sensitive if we touch it too much. So we wanna not push on it. We wanna not mess with it too, too much. Um, but one way to really feel where the vocal folds live is to cough gently. So even more gentle than like a normal cough that you would do um, if you like had a tickle in your throat, just a really, really gentle small cough. And we can feel a little flex of the vocal folds and that's a really helpful way to feel where they sit naturally when we're relaxed. Now when we're singing very high notes, Sometimes we get this little like choking feeling almost. We feel a little disconnected from our voice. Super common issue to have. And that stems from our larynx lifting up out of its natural position. So that's why we feel that like slight choking sensation. Um, so we want just to not lift it. Even though, again, some of these things, the way when a voice teacher says them, it's like, wow, if it was that simple, I would just do it but it is actually that simple. It's just all about building muscle memory, building an understanding of your anatomy, and then teaching yourself how your body can work most efficiently. So that's what we're working on building here is this muscle memory of keeping the larynx low and keeping it relaxed. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, if you would like to keep the larynx relaxed and kind of test what that feels like, you can speak that syllable, he, he, he very relaxed, very low, and very connected with the breath. He, he, he. And we can kind of feel where it lives. And again, at the beginning of the lesson, I talked a little bit about vocal fry. And this is a moment where I would be picky about vocal fry um, because we don't want to be frying when we're practicing this um, vowel because we don't want to enter into it in a tense way or with low breath flow when we're actually singing it. So we want to make sure that our practice swings are actually truly setting us up for success. So with all of that said, I want to keep going with these little staccato E's. If you would like to take some practice swings by speaking them low in your voice, you are of course welcome to. If you'd like to do some gentle little tiny coughs so you can feel your larynx sitting nice and low, you're of course welcome to that as well. So I'll demo and then we'll get right back into it. Let's take it down a little. E, 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 e. Your turn. Big inhale. Good. Let's continue coming up. E, Nice big inhale. Let's do four more. Go ahead, your turn. Go ahead, 
of your turn, big inhale. Two more. Drop your jaw on that top one, your turn. Let's keep going. Last one. Go ahead, your turn, big breath in. Give yourself a second, take a sip of water, anything that feels good, anything that feels supportive right now. So, I know that today was a little bit more concept based and based and a little bit less exercise based than some of the other lessons that I've done here. If you're looking for a bunch more exercises, you can totally go to our YouTube page, uh, which is linked in the comments of this video and see all of the other exercises that I've been teaching over these last couple of weeks. I do wanna close out with just one more nice slidey, relaxing exercise you can really tap into the breath for. So let's go ahead and do nice and easy, big breath in. Really gentle, use the breath, slide between all those notes. Take your inhale into your awe ah shape. And then really just keep that shape as you let yourself kind of float down that chord. Go ahead, your turn. Let's come up. Nice and slidey and easy. Big breath in. Let's keep going. Go ahead, nice big breath in. Continuing for a couple more. Nice big breath in. Oh. Inhale right into that yawny space. Your turn. Let's do two more. Relax, breath in, your turn. All right, y'all, last one. Go ahead, take a nice breath in. Excellent. So, if you have any questions or comments for me, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I'm looking at them right now. Um, so, if you have any questions or comments for me, of course, feel free to leave them for me. If you're interested in signing up for one-on-one -on -one lessons with me, you can reach out through the link in the comments. We are running a 25% off special for your first month right now. Um, so, we're very excited about that. Um, and I hope that you will all tune in again next Friday at four for our weekly live stream free voice lesson. Have a great week. Enjoy.